Pecan <laughs> pralines. Pecan pralines? Pecan pralines. Praline? Yes. I sounds know, it sounds like weird, a right? vehicle. It sounds weird to me when you say it too, so. Hey. Well, hello, and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Honey LeBronx, and yes, I'm vegan. This is what vegan looks like. You can check out my cooking show at vegandragqueen.com. You can check out my podcast at bigfatveganradio.com. And now, you can support my work at patreon.com forward slash Honey LeBronx. For a dollar a month, ten dollars a month, a hundred, a thousand, I don't know how much you want to give, but the more you give, the more awesome perks and rewards you get for your ongoing monthly support. So today, I have a very special guest. I would like to welcome New York City's newest vegan. Please welcome, Jared Bradford. Hey, hey honey. Welcome. 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 Thank so, you. It's a pleasure to be here. I know. I know. And a pleasure to meet you. It's a rare honor. It's a rare honor. Not everyone gets to be on the vegan drag queen, except for me. I, I'm always. <laughs> I'm always invited. It's such an honor to be yourself. And thank you. Right? Oh my God! Someone gets it finally. So I've been watching this guy on the Instagram because um, he he's beautiful. Let's face it. So I'm double tapping on things, and then one day. I see something hashtag vegan, and I'm like, I don't appreciate people making fun of veganism. And so I watched it, and it was him, like, in the kitchen, cooking vegan food for his friends. Like, oh my god, you guys, you have to try this. And he's having them share the food. He's like, what did you think? How was it? And friends are like, it's really good. So, like, you're vegan all of a sudden. Yeah, I, uh, just, I, I started watching a few documentaries and doing a little research, and I started realizing how much of an impact uh, what we eat has on our environment. And uh, it really did something to me. And I said, this is something worthwhile and something that I need to be doing. And the best part was, though, was what you were seeing was when I started discovering that you don't miss that much when you give up meat. How good it actually is. Yeah, it's like I made, I made vegan grilled cheese sandwiches the other day for my boyfriend and I, which I think is what you that saw. That was the one I saw. And I literally could not believe that it tasted exactly yeah. like a grilled cheese. I will say, I went vegan, you're either BC or AD, right? <laughs> I went vegan in the old days, right. BC, before cheese, you went AD after Dea. This is an after Dea vegan. Yes. For me, Dea was invented about a year into my being vegan, mm -hmm. and people were like, oh, you go to this restaurant in Brooklyn, they carry the Dea, and certain restaurants would hook you up, like it's on the menu, if you want a four ounce tub of Dea, will sell it to you. So you had to go to restaurants and wow. buy little pint containers of Daya. So I would buy like 20 bucks worth of Daya every time and keep it in my freezer. You can keep it in your freezer, by the way. I forgot about that. It's really good. And now, I mean, luckily I can get it in the grocery store. Anywhere. Which is fantastic. Anywhere. So what are you going to make for us today? So today, uh, I wanted to veganize a old Louisiana favorite because I'm from Louisiana. Okay. And we love to make... Pecan pralines. Hmm? Pecan pralines. With, with these? With with pecans? With with those, yes. Pecans. Okay, so... Is that, is that anything like pralines? It's exactly like pralines. So it's just like pralines, right. but it sounds fancier. But in the South, we say pecan pralines. No one's perfect. Hey, you're doing the best you can. Leave them alone. All right. So... Now, I just had the chalks on here, also from Boggy Depot, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and they made caramel, and it just was a big to-do. It involved the stove, a candy thermometer, and hours of time. Oh, right. So, you were war you were warning me about this, because you were yeah. saying this was going to be a production, and I said, it doesn't have to be with a rotating stage. Because I can show you how to do it in the micro -onde. That's French for microwave. They're, they're really big in the French down there. Yeah. Really big in the French. And the microonde? Yes. It sounds fancier. It does, right? It does. Everything it does. sounds fancier in French. So we can make microwavable caramel, is what you're trying to tell That's me. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. So, how do we do this? So, instead of using all of the butter and the cream, yeah. we're going to use Earth Balance. Right. Actually, you know what? This isn't even Earth Balance. I use Fleischmann's 
unsalted. Fleischmann's unsalted margarine is entirely vegan, so I use that. It's cheaper. And we're going to use cashew cream. Excellent. Instead of like the heavy whipping cream, which I understand they can learn how to make from. Look at, look at vegan drag queen cashew cream. Mindy Collette shows me how to make cashew milk. To make cashew cream, just basically add less water. How much? I don't know. That's up to you. Just throw in equal parts cashews and water to start, and then keep an eye on the consistency. And from there, keep adding a little water until it's a consistency that you feel good about. Perfect. And then we have uh, some brown sugar, Okay. corn syrup, and then in the end we'll throw in our pecans. Okay, excellent. So, I've actually made this before you came, so I think I know what to do. So we're going to start with just our light brown sugar, and that is 8 ounces of light brown sugar. Get into this wig, honey. Uh, thank you to my sister, Ms. Cracker, for basically just pulling my hair back into a ponytail. I just put it up today because I didn't want to deal with all that. Then we're going to add half a cup, that's four ounces, of cashew cream. And then just one tablespoon of corn syrup. Mmm. Mmm, I know. Look, it's, <laughs> this isn't health food. We're not making, you know... I'll have to come back later. We can make something healthy for, for everyone. You're going to have to. Or people yeah. are going to be like, oh, see, well, vegans aren't healthy because all they eat is processed junk. <laughs> Which is true, you can. You can, but I think it's great to let people know that you can still treat yourself when you're a vegan, too. You don't have to miss anything. As exactly. A vegan. You can have whatever you want. And you know what? If you want to eat processed junk as a vegan, you can do that. And you know why? Because this is America. <laughs> this is America. And that's, that's what we're at war for. We're at war for, so you can eat... I mean, really. Okay, so... We're just gonna start by mixing all of this in, and it will already start to look like caramel by the time this gets mixed. Mm -hmm. That brown sugar. Don't call me brown sugar. Come on, let's go. Come on, everyone. My name is Oprah. Don't call me brown sugar. I wasn't supposed to add the butter just yet. Forget the butter. Add the butter after you take it out of the microwave. Clear? Clear? Are we clear? Clear. Clear. So we're gonna microwave this for exactly seven minutes. Exactly seven minutes. Seven minutes, not a second longer. Now, and here's the reason why. If you microwave it too long, and um, if you have a high-powered microwave, maybe double check, uh, because it will turn into just sort of black, charred, not goodness. I learned this through trial and error. I learned this by reducing the ingredients by half, but not touching the microwave time. And then 13 minutes later, I opened, and I basically had carbon. <laughs> I made carbon. Now, we're going to take some wax paper and line a tray. Now you want to have this good and ready. In fact, I'd say have this ready before you even pop that in the microwave. Right. Here's the thing. We're off to the races, folks, because the minute that that comes out of the microwave, yeah, I'm talking about you. The minute that comes out of the microwave, It'll you want- be very hot. So what we want to do though, is we want to have all this ready to go. Yes. So that we can literally fold in that butter, melt it, and then start pouring, uh, put our pecans in, and then quickly get these in nice little spots on our pan. So we want to walk, we want to, okay, we have 15 cat, seconds. Cat-like state of readiness. I'm going to get you a spoon too. Were there more spoons? There are just two spoons over there. I just put them out. I'm going to get two more, so we each have okay. two. This is going to be like surgical, and I need all oh, the spatula. You have two seconds. All right, you have two seconds. All right, all right. Grab the bowl, bring it out here. That's is bubbling hot. You're bubbling hot. There we go. Here we go. So now we're going to mix this up. Now we're going to fold in our butter. There it our goes. Our mantequilla. We need that to melt Stir in Stir that in. That's melting in. And then as you're stirring, I'm going to start. Boom. Go for it. With our pecans. One cup of toasted pecans. And I would say, uh, you know what? Are we there? Are we there yet? I think are we we're there. there. I think we're there. there. Awesome. So, Go for it. So now, how are so we going to do We're going to spoon this. We're going to spoon this. This is kind of like scissoring, but without the athleticism. So there we go. It's oh got God. that nice... I'm spooning... Shiny. ...with Jared Bradford. Jealous? I am so jealous of myself right now. Look at you. You get to spoon with yourself anytime you want. I mean, think about that. I just... I mean, you know? I, no, no, no. You can't, because spooning, by definition, requires two people. Not the way I do it. Oh, right. Honestly, I need to take some lessons from hiding oh the rocks. Oh my god, look at these. These look delicious. Now, these. Are these looking right so far? Are these, these like, yeah, like I think we're actually, used to make only vegan? 
We could. They're they're a little heavy on the pecans. I think you're a little heavy on the pecans. We could have done maybe like a half a cup of the pecans, maybe instead. Okay. Well, then we would be half-assing things. But I like pecans a lot. So, okay. Yeah. So, but that's pretty much what a pecan praline looks like. You know? Yeah, absolutely. There we go. And Look then when that. The, and then these are going to harden up really nicely. You're going to harden up really nicely. Uh, you can even put them in the fridge if you want that to happen a little faster. Okay, I think I just might do that. So these set faster. I'm just going to set these in the freezer for just like a couple of minutes yeah. to keep an eye on them. So while we do that, I wonder what it would look like in an alternate universe if we had totally f***ed those up. This is going to turn out like batch one, I think. Uh, I think so, too. <laughs> we actually kind of missed the mark. I talked right over that moment when we should have... So basically, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> if they turn this kind of white color, you know you waited too long. You want to scoop these onto the tray while they're still... Glossy. Shiny and glossy. Yeah. Once they turn like opaque and white, then uh, you've kind of lost it. <laughs> so for our purposes, it's not really going to matter that these look like hell. And uh, I wouldn't serve them to my dog. Wow, those looked awful. I bet they probably still tasted delicious. Honestly... I've made them both ways. Yeah. I've ruined them, and I've made them perfectly. When you make them perfectly, they're like glassy, sugary, sweet little cookies. Right? Not like quite a cookie, but like a confection. You're right. The other stuff just kind of tastes like crumbled up brown sugar and pecans. It's a little more crumbly. It's really crumbly. It's like something you would sprinkle it, over It literally cobbler. only has to do with how much time you take to get those things spooned out onto your wax paper, so... You're welcome. If you wait too long, it starts to harden without you. Learn from our mistakes. Learn from our mistakes. So, while the pralines... Pralines. ...are in the freezer, uh, setting, cooling, um, Jared, why don't you tell us where we can find you? So, if you'd like to find any of my photos, videos, or just follow my generally fun travels around the world, um, you can look me up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, J Bradford INC. Facebook, it's facebook.com slash jbradford.inc. There you go. And I think it's probably time to take our print, print, uh, take our stuff out <laughs> of the freezer. So, wow, here we go. Awesome. How does that look? Those look delicious. That's what they should look like. Peel them right off the wax paper and serve them up. And they're ready to eat. They're ready to eat. Well, look at that. Well, you're welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. Jared, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you, honey. It was really fun getting to share a Louisiana favorite with you. Oh, my God. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Even if even if they can't pronounce it. Oh, I'm not going <laughs> to eat that because that has paper on it now. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Oh, my thank God. You. Thank you so much. You are just <laughs> such a gem. Mwah. Thank you. I can't wait to see it. Thank you for not the face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Get home safe. Bye. Thank you. How wonderful is he? How wonderful is he? When I was a kid, I mumbled and I spoke really, really, really fast. I tried to talk as fast as I could think. So, did me talking? Yeah, I was kind of like, hey, I was kind of bathroom, like, I, I would call my friend, I would be like, hey, I'm sending a message to you, and just looking up. And people, it got, it got so frustrating pouring my heart out to someone <laughs> and having them just say, what? Huh? <laughs> and at a certain point, I just, I think through theater, I just kind of got, I'm like, you know what? If I speak and they misunderstand me, only I am to blame, because that's the only thing I have any control over. Yeah. It's actually one of the things that kind of breaks my heart about all these cuts to the arts. Yeah, oh. Because people don't realize, the, like, how much theater helps kids. Like, just that's how you learn I mean, confidence. It's getting in front of people, confidence, speaking, communicating effectively, uh, relating to other people, understanding other people's situations. I mean, there's so much that the oh arts God. contribute to... 
just learning how to be a human. I think everything today is geared towards like your education is for the purpose of getting you a job, and like that's not the purpose of being alive. That's not the purpose of experiencing. Exactly. We're becoming hippies at this point. We're kind of <laughs> we're kind of lezzing out right now. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Hey, if I want to sit underneath a tree and call myself Willow, can we scissor later? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not flexible. I was at a vegan festival once. If she's watching, God bless her. This woman, she met me, and she's like, "Hi, I'm Amethyst." And I just want to be like, no, you're not. It's your fucking name. <laughs> you're like, I'm Amethyst. I'm like, I'm Rainbow. I'm going to call you Catherine. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did that in Iceland. I would meet people. I'm like, what's your name? And she's like, Anna. And I'm like, hmm? Anna. Brunhil. Quende. These weird. I'm just going to call you Katie. What's your name? Gvudrun. And I'm like, hi, Gvudrun. It's nice to meet you. You have a simple name. I'm not like, Katie here. <laughs> they thought that, that was hilarious. See, I'm funny in Iceland. Kind of.